make your paper mola, you start with a drawing that you've made exactly the size that you want your mola to be. You'll be using it as sort of a pattern. On the back, you cover with oil pastels that contrast with the colors you'll be using. I have black that I'm going to be using for the background. And for this method, you can even start out by using scraps for the actual colors of the mola. Because you'll be cutting out the smallest pieces first. So you start out by placing it on top of the paper you'll be using. I'm starting with yellow. So for this method, I'm going to be starting by um, tracing the inside first, the smallest layer. Not the details, but the layer of the main subject. You can see that it's transferred well enough that I can see it and cut it out. Now I put glue on the back of it. And then I put it on top of my next color. And it could have even been a much smaller piece. So this is my second ring. It goes around the first layer. And I trace around it so that there's about a quarter of an inch between the yellow and the line that I'm making. And I don't really have to measure because with a space like this, it's not too hard to get the distance even all the way around. Okay, once I've done that, I cut it out and then I put glue on the back and now I'm ready to use yellow again for my next layer. So this is going to be my third layer down. So I, paste, I put it on the yellow and I'm marking off the layers as I go. It kind of helps so I can keep track. And again, I trace around. Now, this is much easier for you to see because I'm tracing on yellow. But it's important to keep it about the same distance from the purple all the way around. And like again, it's probably about a quarter of an inch, between a quarter and an eighth. And then for this particular layer, it has a little foot. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the little foot as part of this layer. And then, of course, I'll cut it out, but you don't really need to watch that. Okay, so I've cut it out, and so now I have three layers, and I'm going on to my fourth layer. And I do the same thing I've been doing. I just draw around it and try to keep my line the same distance all the way around from the yellow. So I think I've marked my four layers on my drawing too so that I know where I am. And then this one's going to be cut out. Okay, but there's other parts too. I've got the bird and now I've got the different things like the little leaves are on the outside. And I'll start out with uh, this leaf here. I only need a little bit of a scrap. I just have to make sure that it goes under the entire leaf and I trace the inside layer and make sure it's transferred enough that I can see it so that I can cut that one out. And then I glue that one onto purple. All I need is a scrap. And I need to make sure I have enough room around it that I can draw my line about a quarter inch out. And I carefully draw around this one too, all the way around, about a quarter inch out. And then that one gets cut out. Okay, so I can start gluing it on my paper. I've got all of the layers of the bird that I want. I only had two layers for the leaf, although I could have had more. And I refer to my drawing to see about where I want everything in relation to everything else. And then I glue it on. It works best if you glue things on as you do them, then you won't lose them. Now I'll go on to the other leaf that's up on top there after I glue this one on.
did this leaf exactly the same way as I did the other leaf, so I didn't think you needed to watch me do it. You already know how. So now I'm going to go on to this leaf here, and remember, you always trace the innermost outline first. And not the details, but the actual outline of the actual object. And so I'll cut that one out. And I'm cutting off a lot of the excess paper, and that'll make it a lot easier for me to cut into those little indentations. So that's one thing that you could remember is, you know, cut off the excess paper and then it makes it easier. So this shape fits in like that. And now I want to go to my next layer, so it's going to be yellow. And I'll glue that down onto the scrap. And I'll draw my line around it just like I've been doing. The process should be pretty familiar by now. I could do a lot of different layers this way. And then I cut it out and glue it on. Now for some little details you might not have to trace them. These little uh, details can be pretty much made the same size. And if you remember in elementary school how you fan folded paper and then cut out one shape to get multiple shapes, that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll draw the shape right on there. And then I'll just carefully cut it out. Kind of wants to slide, so I have to really grip it. And then this is what I'll end up with. I can glue those down. Now some inner details have more complicated shapes and you are better off to trace them. And that would be like parts of this wing here and the tail. So since the bird's yellow, I'm going to be cutting them out in purple. And so I'll get myself a purple scrap that will fit underneath. And then I'll trace them onto there. So they're going to go there. And so here comes my purple scrap. Make sure it fits. Yep, it does. And then I trace around both of these. And I try to stay as true to the original shape that I drew as possible. So there they are. And then I'll cut them out. And they'll get glued in place. So here's part of the wing, and I'll try to place it where I had it in my original design as much as possible, although I could change it if I wanted to. And then here's the inside of the tail. So you keep going like that. You start out with uh, the innermost layer, you cut it out, and then you lay it on a piece of paper and you trace the next layer and so on. A characteristic of molas is those little vertical lines that they have making patterns all around the main images. And if you cut them out individually it would take a really long time. But if you fan fold a strip of paper like you learned how to do in grade school and then held that strip of paper all together and cut out one image and you can even draw the image on there first. All you have to do is cut out the one, but you end up with several. And I think I'm going to end up with about six of them here. And then I can just glue them on. So anytime you need multiples of the same image, the fan fold is a really good idea. It works really well. So here's my finished design. 
And then I could mount it on a piece of uh, bigger construction paper, probably yellow, and put designs all the way around the outside, like a frame.